how do they call it now? Special edition, the secret of Monkey Island. Classic point and click adventure, that's what it is. Old school, similar to Broken Sword. Full Throttle, Grim Fandango, and so on. One of the very first, the, the first version of the game was back in 99, 32 years ago. This one is from 2009. And the question is, is it worth playing in 2022? Of course, special edition, not 90s, and though you can play 90s, but this one is straight up 10 times better in every aspect. No matter if you're nostalgic and you played this as a kid or what, this one is just on a different level. First section would be the story. Comedy, healthy comedy, no bad words. There's nothing negative that I can say about the story of the Monkey Island. Monkey Island 1, Curse of Monkey Island, call it how you like. Comedy is brilliant. Okay, it's It sincerely made me laugh for at least 10 times in my playthrough. Writing is hilarious. Characters, everything, like absolutely everything. Cutscenes, item interactions. A lot of detail went into it. If you want a comedy, if you want adventure stories, just 10 out of 10 and that's it. Bugs and optimization. This is 10 out of 10. The game works like a charm, but really like a charm. There's like no loading screens at all. At all. Even when you do transitions from, from new version to 90s version. No bugs, no glitches. No crashes. Perfect game. Extremely perfect game. Game time. Now that's... That depends, okay, on a player, really. For me, it says 8.6 hours. Uh, I finished the game in 7 hours. Spent a lot of time on breaks when the game was on. And when I was talking on chat and so on. If I was playing alone, it would be a 6 hours long game. Okay. 6 hours. Now, that's for me six hours. Someone that's extremely smart is gonna finish this game in two, three hours, okay? People that don't have experience in adventures, they might, without guides and walkthroughs, you give this to someone that plays Counter-Strike only or I don't know what, MOBAs or, you know, games, for this new generation you give them to play monkey island they probably gonna take years to finish if they can finish which is a big question i guess 50 percent of them won't even be able to pass the first 15 percent of the game because puzzles are old school they're very rough not only that you need to use brain, you also need to pay attention to a lot of things. So game time is... It varies, okay. The game is also 8 bucks on a sale, you can probably get it for a buck or two, okay. And considering the price for 2022, I, I don't know, like, if you can get it for one, two bucks, it's 10 out of 10. I'm gonna count this price out of eight bucks. And I'm still gonna give it 10 out of 10. 
Why? Because you get more hours than when watching a movie that costs exactly the same. So, 10 out of 10. Game difficulty. Difficulty, as far as adventure goes, it's not like the last journey, okay? Nearly unbeatable with those puzzles where you need to have 200 IQ to play. It's not like that, but it's still a hard game. I got stuck, okay, for 30, 40 minutes on some areas, two or three areas in the game got me really stuck. I need to take a break to think about it, literally, of what am I supposed to do next. So, as I said, you need to pay attention on every detail in the game. That's how it is. Yikes. Hey! Wait a second! I mean... I can't give it 10 out of 10, they are harder adventures. But this one is mega hard, especially for new generations. I guess for them it's 20 out of 10. 9 out of 10. What adventure? Maps and graphics. We got Melee Island and the Monkey Island. And one segment on a ship. Night, day covered. Jungle, beach, open sea, village, city, caves. That's about it. A lot of interiors, the church, store. House, yes. The inn. Now, there's also a map when you play for both Melee Island and Monkey Island. Very clear map, by the way. And as far as graphics go, It's a very, very crisp game. Now look how, how it was in 90s. Let me look at it like now. For an adventure it looks great. Okay, nothing amazing. It can be way much better, of course. Because this is 2009. 2022. Imagine another remake now on this. But again, it looks good. I wish there was more variety in maps. And that the game was a bit longer. But it's not. That's how it was in 90s. You can easily call this game 80s and not 90s because it's 1990. So... Maps and graphics for this version for 2022 will receive 8 out of 10. Because I know it can be better. As far as, as adventures go. It still looks great. Gameplay. It's point and click. Adventure. A hard one. Funny one. Where you get to mix items so you can pass all of these items use them combine them use them on an npc use them on an obstacle use them to resolve a puzzle so you can move on every time when you resolve something a funny scene will happen and so on and so forth um there's also that main map navigation included in the gameplay, and my favorite part, the sword fight, or better say, the bits fight. It's absolutely also hilarious. And extremely innovative. 
Even now in 2022, it's extremely innovative. Battle with words instead of swords. I haven't seen something like this that even today. Okay, not to mention in 19. So that's also a very strong part of the game. For those that love adventures, it's 20 out of 10 for the gameplay, but objectively speaking, there are better adventures in terms of gameplay and what you can do than Monkey Island. Monkey Island is old school, one of the pioneers. So that's why it's 9 out of 10. Uh, next section would be leveling and itemization. Old school, old school games barely had leveling, okay, especially during 90s. That came out from 94, 95, from Diablo 1 and onwards. As well as itemization, and this game has brutal itemization, okay, because it's equally important for gameplay. All the items you find do something so you can advance, okay, and... Considering the UI, that's everything there is. Right. How it used to be. And how it is right now. So. Adventure doesn't require. Experience or leveling, it requires good itemization system and this one has it it can be atrocious to resolve some puzzles because of the items they got mysterious descriptions funny but mysterious descriptions when you click on them and, and you need to use your brain to actually resolve something um could it be better yeah but it's also unfair because this 32 years old game, the remake just changed the graphics and the UI, but not the base concept of the game. In 2022, this would be 7 out of 10 for the adventure. Okay. NPCs and enemies. Enemies as well as NPCs are the same. You resolve them with conversation, with your wits, with funny scenes. There's plenty of NPCs in the game, including the main guy, Guybrush Stripwood, and Alec Chuck as his main enemy. All NPCs are absolutely hilarious. Okay, there is not a waste of time on a single NPC. They all have their purpose. Absolutely all, even the dogs in the game. And everything is there to make you laugh. It doesn't get better. Okay. For adventure, it doesn't get better. Because you remember that. Once you finish this game, you're gonna remember every freaking NPC. And when you can remember every freaking NPC once you're done, that's 10 out of 10. Music and sound, everything is voice acted, every single freaking word is voice acted. Great sound effects, epic music, relaxing, funny music. Especially the main team, one of the best main teams in video gaming history. It's a cheerful game, after all. Voice acting also, it adds so much to the immersion because the old version didn't have voice acting, okay? Well, this one, every single line of text is covered. <laughs> it's just way too good with voice acting, to be honest. Right. Yeah, old version didn't have voice acting. 
This one nails it. It's amazing. Final verdict for Monkey Island. We call it one uh, in twenty twenty two. Eighty three points. Nine point two out of ten. This is a 10 out of 10 game in 90s and around 9 out of 10 game for 2022 everyone should play this everyone okay because the game is really really unique and special in every single aspect